Hi guys, this is Gavin from Options Trading IQ and today I just want to give you a quick tutorial on the Interactive Brokers Risk Navigator. Just give you a few tips and things that I've learned over the years that might help you use this uh, application. So this is kind of the default screen that comes up when you first log into the Risk Navigator. You can see it has your underlying positions split out by security and then you have all your analytical tools up the top here and your Greeks um, and things like that. So the first thing I like to do is come in and whichever expiry date my positions are based in or whatever I want to look at, I change the date here and that will change the payoff graph to show us our expiry date graph. And then I like to just sort of left click and zoom in on the main area that I want to look at. So that's kind of the first thing I do to see what I'm, I'm looking at, how my positions are. Um, you can see unrealized P&L, P&L for the day price you can you can remove these columns if you don't want to see these the ones I mostly look at are the delta dollar exposure and and the other Greeks as well delta gamma vega and theta so the other thing that you can do this obviously shows the portfolio as a whole what you can do is if I want to just look at my Nasdaq position for example I can zoom in uh, choose the underlying Nasdaq and that shows that position and again I can zoom in on the main area if I want to just look at that um, you can use these buttons here to, if I want to remove the view of all the underlying option chains or I can, I can press add and that will expand everything out. Show us what we're looking at there. So that's my current position. I can see my delta, my gamma, vega and uh, theta as well. Then if I want to switch and maybe look at the SPX position switch to XPX, you know, I can hide all that if I don't want to look at the actual chains and I can zoom in and, you know, see how the position's looking, um, analyze the Greeks and things like that. Now, the one limitation when you're working in my portfolio, which is the default that comes up and, you know, brings in all your live positions, you can't, you can't play around with this and you can't edit them and work on adjustment options. So to do that, what you need to do is create uh, what's called a what-if portfolio. And to do that, you go up to here, Portfolio, and New. And I've got it set at the default that it brings in all my current positions. Um, but you can set the default so that you start with a blank screen and you can just manually um, add your option chains in here. So go in and choose our expiry date. Let's say I just want to look at the Russell. Um, I can choose Russell as the underlying here, as we did earlier. Or I can get rid of everything else. I can expand. And if I just left click and drag and then hit delete, I can get rid of all the NASDAQ positions and get rid of all the SPX positions. And now I'm just left with the Russell ones. And I'll try and make the graph a little bit bigger. Okay, so now I can see what I'm working with. You can see the delta is probably a little bit too high here considering how much theta I'm bringing in. We can zoom back out and, and cut off the top of that graph, so we'll do that again. There we go. So, you know, now I can play around with some adjustment options. And my delta, as you can see, is a little bit short. So we can go in here, type in RUT, oops, and enter options. Let's say we want to add a November call option just to reduce our delta a little bit for the short term. Let's say we want to add, I'm not sure whether I'd add the 11.20 or the 11.30, so let's bring them both in. And let's say we want to start by adding, this is where when I'm just working on adjustments, I just kind of play around with this, see how it affects the delta. See, that gets us back to very much delta neutral. Uh, theta and vega are one to one. And then we can look at the, the graph. I'll just try and make that a bit bigger. See, so that's not a bad adjustment option there. Um, you know, it keeps the entire profit line above zero, gives us a little bit of a, a buffer on the upside and gets our delta back into a neutral position. So that's not a bad option to work with. Um, you know, or we could let's hide the October ones. Maybe we want to buy a, um, you know, we could try a 1020. That's probably going to make the graph not look quite so good, but. Um, There we go, you can see pretty similar there. Sometimes you have to play around with this a little bit. It, it doesn't bring in the, it doesn't update the graph properly and then you have to 
switch back to to the the Russell. Um, seems like it's working okay this time. So that's how you kind of create a what-if portfolio and work on adjustment options. And if I want to save this portfolio so that I can work with it later, I can just go up here and save as. Um, or if I want, you might like to um, go to report, export, you can export it to Excel and play around with it there. The other thing I like to do in Risk Navigator is, you know, when I'm starting a new position, I like to always evaluate the position and see how it looks. So, you know, you can start with a what-if portfolio and just remove everything start with a completely blank canvas you know come in here bring in your option chains that you're interested in so let's say we want to bring in bring in some puts and bring in some calls So add those in and then you know we can we can start building a position here and, and just play around with it and see how it looks. You know, you can start with a base iron condor. Oh, I added in the puts on the upside, I should have done calls. So let's do that again. Bring in the call options this time. So we create sort of an iron condor base position just to start with and sort of see how it looks. Um, you know, delta's a little bit short there, so if we want to be a bit more neutral, maybe we could roll the puts up. Um, gets us a little bit more neutral, still still short, and then you know we can have a look at the the graph here and zoom in. See how we're looking. We're more or less in the middle there. If you switch it to switch the underlying to all underlyings at the bottom here it'll change at the moment we're showing the Russell underlying price if we change it to all underlyings it'll give you a percentage move so sometimes you might prefer to look at the percentage move to give you an idea of um, of how much margin for area you have so we've got two percent on the upside and two percent on the downside here um, so that's kind of how I look at starting a new position and just really just playing around with them and uh, and finding something that I like something that the Greeks makes sense and the graph looks good. The other thing that I use uh, occasionally, I don't find that works very well, so I, I only use it a little bit, um, is the custom scenario just here. Brings up your custom scenario on the right, so you could say, you know, this iron condor that we've created, what's going to happen if the Russell drops 3%? and let's say volatility goes up by 5%. So a rise in volatility, that's going to be bad for our iron condor. We just hit apply. And you can see this gets a little bit busy here, so you might want to remove some of the columns, which you can do up here under metrics. Um, let's say we want to take out price. We don't really need that. Um, the trade column we can get rid of. Get rid of that. So that this was our initial position that we created, and now this is our new custom scenario. Um, we can see that if the Russell drops three percent, our delta is going to go positive up to to thirty eight delta, which is equivalent to thirty nine thousand dollars, and we'd be sitting on unrealized P and L of three hundred dollars. Now, the reason I don't use this too often is that I'm not convinced how accurate these numbers are. Um, you know, I think if there was a five percent rise in volatility. Um, and the market drops three percent, we might be be showing a little bit more of a loss than that. But it does just give you a little bit of an idea, you know, on what might happen with the position. Um, for example, if we expand the custom scenario again, let's say, let's say the Russell drops eight percent, volatility's up fifteen percent. So that's going to be really bad for our position, right? Let's see how that looks now. Yeah, maybe that's a bit more realistic. Un unrealized losses of two point two thousand three hundred. Um, the delta is quite long. Um, so again, it's it's not really that accurate. Um, there's so many different variables that you're playing with here that um, 
you know, it, it's it's hard to know if it's going to be correct. But obviously, if Ru- if the Russell drops eight percent and volatility goes up fifteen, you are going to be you know suffering an unrealized loss. So it, it does kind of make sense. The other thing you can do is change the date as well. So let's say that all that's happened, um, but it, over the course of the next five days, and we've still got you know five or six days to expiry. How's our unrealized P&L going to be looking now? See, it's actually worse, which doesn't really make sense. If more time's gone by, you'd think that the the theta would have kicked in. Um, or maybe that's because we're outside of our. That's probably because we're outside of our um, our uh, our graph. So let's say maybe it was down one percent, but volatility spiked up. You can see we're actually showing a, a gain because because I guess the theta has kicked in. So you can kind of just play around with these variables and, and different scenarios that you might want to look at. Um, but don't don't take it as a gospel that, that whatever these numbers give you back is, is what's going to happen. The other thing you might see on the graphs, um, when you log in, um, you might have a bunch of... Let's get rid of that custom scenario... You might have a bunch of lines on the graph. Um, sometimes the default for, is for volatility up, volatility down. It'll show you how the position is looking. Um, and sometimes it'll have the most recent or the previous close. I, I don't really like to look at these ones. They don't really mean too much to me. I usually just like to look at the expiry graph. Um, you know, I sort of know that if volatility goes down, I'm going to make money. If it goes up, I'm going to lose money. So, you know, I don't really need to see those on the graph. Usually just clean that up a bit and just look at the expiry graph. So that's about it really that I can think of, but there's a few little tips in there. Hopefully you've picked up a few pointers and uh, you know if you're using interactive brokers, you know, I highly recommend using the risk navigator every day to, to monitor your Greeks and make sure that your position and your, your total risk is under control.